everyone is born with a certain amount of potential pump, but not everyone has the innate ability to convert their potential pump into kinetic pump. And that's where we come in. Um, the average person has about 320 joules of potential pump when they're born, and that increases exponentially as they get into adolescence. But that's a code red. That's a code red. This is big. This is big. Only Richard can call it code red. This is big. Code red. Code red. We do a whole host of things at this company, event planning, um, corporate work, youth reclamation, but we take childbirth very seriously. <laughs> Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Born Pump Seminars. Historically, uh, childbirth was a very dangerous endeavor. Just 50 to 100 years ago, there was astronomically high rates of uh, infant death and maternal death during pregnancy. Over time, we have virtually eradicated that. We still have the most helpless offspring of all mammals. Horses, when born, can stand within an hour, can walk, trot, and run within two hours. You gotta be kidding me. We gotta be ashamed of ourselves. You gonna tell me that horses are more pumped than we are? I don't think so. He makes a good point. This, this is unacceptable. Babies need oxygen. Pumped babies need more oxygen. The brain development alone requires a, a tremendous amount of oxygen. There's only one way to achieve this. If you're going to be pumped, you need to breathe. That's it. Keep breathing. That's the way. Keep breathing. You can't be pumped if you're not breathing correctly. You need to enter oxygen into the baby. How do you expect your child to be born pumped if we're not breathing correctly? That's it. That's the way to do it. That's it. See, now I told you, she's taller, you get, she's taller you, so she should kind of scooch down, down, right? down a little bit. Yeah. Just go down a little bit, straight, yeah. spread your legs a little bit, and then see, so get right in there. Just down get the finger more, in a little bit, right, right in there. there. That's a high side. Yeah, now see, the hand is probably like right about here. Right in here, this is the crease you want to be in. That's the spot, that's the sweet spot, you want to be there. If you've ever studied embryology, you'd note that, that fingers are fully developed at six weeks. The hand fully formed at eight weeks. These infants are fully capable of a high five at 10 weeks. Put your bellies together and experience the high five. Go ahead. You'll start to feel, you okay. feel that? That's not a kick, okay? That's a high five. Did you ever see Shawshank Redemption? Prison changes people. What would you do if you were in there for nine months? Well, you were in there and you don't remember. The reason you don't remember is because it was a traumatic experience. All we're trying to do is give these kids hope. There you go. Come on now. Let's pump it up. Let's pump this up. Let your fetus be your guide. Yeah.
everyone realizes that our kids are bigger, they're stronger, they're faster, they're smarter than kids that are born from a conventional birth. Uh, a lot of people also know that, okay, yes, children who are born pumped, they're capable of walking on the first day. Usually it only takes a few hours. We have some kids that are walking right out of the womb. Now, a lot of people do ask me the question, they say, hey, what does it mean to be born pumped? And actually, that's pretty simple. First, we teach the children how to be pumped when they are in utero. Second, during the actual childbirth, what we do is we talk to the child through the womb. We say, hey, when you're ready to come out, we're ready for you. Let's do this thing. Today I'm meeting with a prospective client who is interested in learning a bit more about the process of being born pumped. Now often the parents are a little reluctant at first, but once they see us in action, they know they've made the right decision. And one thing that we always make very clear is that it is standard procedure for us to hold on to the babies for the first week. Pumped! Babies! Pumped! These kids were born with the pump fired up. Crawl their way out of the wet, sticky wood. Now babies pump, they live pump, they are pumped. Walk in a week, live with dudes with a tie. Get it up, fire up. Pump it up. Live for pump. Pump. Babies. Pump. We see, we like to get involved in the full process. Okay, we'll come out to your home. We'll do a full on-site evaluation of your family environment. And when your baby's ready to be born, we'll be there for you around the clock. Now, after the birth, we'll help you celebrate and before you know it, we'll be part of your family. Most importantly though, we'll be there for you down the line to teach you and your loved ones how to keep that child pumped. As you can see, the babies have everything they could possibly need. There's constant pump stimulation. And our nanny Jackie's great with the kids too. The parents really learn a lot about what it takes to raise a pumped baby. I just changed the linens for you. Thanks Jackie. I think we can handle it and I really it, think the baby is going to benefit it's really, from it. It's really amazing how, how much they could do so young. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't think that was possible. I know, I know. Come on, get in, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's a code red! It's a code red, what is it? We got a 1053, she's got five centimeters. A 1053? Get to work, come on. <laughs> Honey, it's gonna be okay. I see the hospital right there. Keep holding. No, wait. We don't need a hospital, man. We're going to Richard's. Who is Richard? Over the years, I spent a lot of time in maternity wards, and usually everybody's nervous and tense. But when a baby's born pumped, totally different story. Push it out. Pump it up. Push it out. Pump it up. Push it out. Pump it up. Push it out. Call this yeah, little yeah, gift. I don't have it. You're gonna call her yeah, Shiloh. 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 Every kid is different. You never know how they're gonna react. But I tell you this: pump babies never forget the day they were born. Shiloh. 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 When we first started to develop the born pumped methodology uh, back in the 90s, we consulted with everybody, all the leading experts in pediatric neurology, developmental psychology, anthropological sociology, everybody. So really, it's no surprise that these kids are doing so well. We had, we had six couples in our very first born pumped class. And everybody was just so excited about having the first pumped baby. And much to our surprise, it was a young lady by the name of Emily Moore, who was only seven months pregnant. Seven months, and she went first. And despite being premature, her son John was 14 pounds, 3 ounces, and 27 inches. And you look at him now, 11 years later, you look at 
You look at his athletic and academic achievements, his, his fluency in different languages, his general thirst for knowledge. You know, a lot of people think John is just an overachiever who's going to burn out in a couple of years, but what they don't realize, John was born pumped. He's a happy kid. That's what being pumped does for people. Even though you were born the old-fashioned way, it doesn't mean it's over for you. There's still hope. Just because you weren't born pumped, doesn't mean you can't be pumped. When I say Alja, you say bruh. Alja. Bruh! Alja. Bruh! Alja. Bruh! Alja. Bruh! That's what we do. We do it for the kids. That's what we're here for. So these are tomorrow's leaders here. If we don't pump them up, who's going to pump them up? We have to do this. We need to do this. We love Matt. 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 Back in college, I studied literature, uh, Macbeth. I read Hamlet. And uh, through all my studies, I learned one thing, that ultimately, uh, you must rely upon yourself. I can recall a poem that we read in high school about a guy um, walking through the woods and came upon two paths. And I don't remember if it was winter or his, if his girlfriend broke up with him, but the point is that way leads to way. If you've been sitting around in a womb for nine months, you're going to be sitting around for the rest of your life. Now, if you take a look at what goes down in a conventional childbirth uh, situation, you have people pushing and pulling for the baby. Everybody's trying to do everything they could to make the baby come out of the womb. And, and no one's making the baby do any of the work. And really, that's pretty problematic, in my opinion, because that, that doesn't reflect what really goes on uh, in everyday life. Now, if you take a look and you say, hey, what do you do different in a pump childbirth? Well, what we really do is we say, hey, are you ready? If you're ready, the door's open. You know, we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, teaching mothers and encouraging them to push and all these sorts of things that we do during the childbirth, and it's unnecessary. Uh, the child can exit the womb on its own. We constructed a 40 to 1 scale of the human uterus. Come on out! 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 Mr. Pump fire up one time. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. How far? Hey. Pump me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. How far? Oh. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let's talk about pump, baby. Let's fire up you and me. Let's talk about all the high fives and the fist bumps that may be. Let's talk about pump. Let's talk about pump. Let's talk about pump. Let's talk about pump.